The objective of this lesson is to learn the ins and out of protecting and unprotecting sheets. So let's start. I have here a sheet with data. And if I go to the name of the sheet at the bottom, I right click, I do protect sheet, I will get a menu. Basically, everything that you select in this menu means that you are allowing the user to do. For example, the user can select cells and I'll explain what locked and unlocked means later on in this lesson. So what he cannot do, for example, is inserting rows or deleting columns, etc. because I didn't select them. Now for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to allow the user to insert a column. Then I need to put my password. You need to know two things about password. Number one, it is case sensitive. Number two, if you forget your password, it is very hard to unlock your Excel sheet. So I always advise you to keep a version on your computer that is not locked. So in case something happens, you have a backup. So let's put a password. I'm just going to put one letter. And then we re-enter the password and we say, OK. Now what happens? Anywhere I go into the Excel, if I want to type a number, I can't. I get an error message. If I want, for example, to right click, delete, I can't. I cannot insert. I cannot sort. As you can see, I can't do much. The only thing I could do is go here, right click and insert the column. Why? Because I allow the user to do so. Now, how do you unprotect the sheet? You just go to the sheet name, you right click, unprotect sheet, and you put your password. And once it's done, you are unprotected. So you can write anything here and it will work. So let's remove this column. And let's look at some features in Excel for locked and unlocked cells with the protection. So imagine that you have a scenario where I want to allow the user to change the data only in this column, but not anywhere else. What would I do? Because if I protect my Excel, the user cannot do anything unless I allow him to do everything he wants, right? So selectively blocking some cells and unblocking other cells is one thing that we will explore. The other thing that we want to explore is hidden formulas. So here, for example, I have some formulas, as you can see, right? Imagine that I don't want the user to see this formula. So how can I do this? Let's look at the two things together and then we will protect our sheet. So first I'm going to select my odd column. Then I'll go to home. I click here on this arrow and then I click on protection. Under protection, I have those two options, locked and hidden. Now by default, all my cells are locked in Excel. What it means is that once I protect, the user cannot type anything on those cells. But if it's not protected, the user can do anything. It doesn't matter if locked is ticked or not. So if I untick locked for this column, so I selected this column, then the user will be able to type here if I protect the sheet. So I'm going to say OK. And if I select, for example, another column and I go to the same menu, you will see that the other column is locked. Now let's select this column and go to the same menu, protection. In this one, we're going to add hidden. Hidden means I cannot see the formula. So for example, here you have a formula, you will not be able to see it. Let's go and protect our sheet again. I'm going to remove insert column. I'm going to put a password, re-enter the password. If you see, if I go anywhere and I type, I cannot do it. But if I go to my odd column and I type, it will allow me to do it because I did not lock those cells. The other thing that you'll see is that if you go to this column row, you won't see the formula anymore. See, in all of them, you can see the formulas or the numbers. Here, you cannot see anything. You just see the final output. And this is how it works with protect and unprotect sheet. If I unprotect the whole thing, then again, you will see everything and you'll be able to make changes. So those features are very useful when you have, for example, input form. So you want the user to change something. And then based on this, you will calculate some values and data. But you don't want the user to be messing up with your Excel and changing things. And this is where you use 
those locked and hidden options.